kind of Susan's thing. Now her background in her video is a video. I'm just using a static image, but maybe we'll get a good demo out of it. Let's bring in our um, our new test image, Susan one. Okay, so let's drop that onto the timeline. So again, let's back that up. Then I want to configure my initial state. So I'll go to Visual Properties, and I'm going to scale this all the way down to nothing. Okay, now I'm going to move to where I kind of want the animation to be finished. I'm going to click Add Animation, and I'm going to make the change. Boom. Okay. So the reason I don't really worry about the timing too much on this is that if you try to add that into the mix, what you're going to find is that, you know, it's more difficult. What you notice I did was I just created the animation. Now I can make it happen whenever I want by clicking and moving it, right? And I can make it last as long as I want. So I don't screw around with trying to figure all that out as I'm creating the animation. Just make the animation and then bring it in when I want and make it last how long I want and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and play this animation. Okay, and if I want it to come in faster, then I just make it come in faster and adjust maybe when it comes in. Zoom! to emphasize her actual question has to do with something called easing. I'm going to try to just scrub this for a little bit. Now what you notice is it comes in, comes in, comes in, and then boom, it just stops. It's very abrupt, right? And what happens when you do animations is that if you have stuff just stop, it ends up looking jerky and amateurish. All animation packages like After Effects or good animation programs have this concept called easing, which means that it's not going to just stop so abruptly, but the software is going to make a little adjustment automatically that says, ooh, hit the brakes there and, you know, ew, then stop. That's called easing. And the way you kind of get it to come into play is you create your animation, like we just did here, and again, I'm going to speed it up even just a little bit faster. It demos better if it moves real fast and then just comes to a screeching halt. Is you create your animation, and then you right-click here on the little bubble guy, and you see here where it says Animation Easing? You say Exponential In and Out. And what that basically means is that instead of a jerky start and a jerky stop, it can just kind of ease it. It's definitely a decidedly better move than just the no easing, the abrupt stop. Uh, Naomi says, don't you need to set your starting point for the animation and then have a second animation point for the end? No, that is a huge mistake. Think about it. That would be two animations. All I want to do, and, and think about it this way to wrap your head around it, the beginning of the animation, all I'm doing is deciding, again, what the state is. So let me give you a little example here. Maybe I don't want to do the zoom in from nothing. Let's say I want it to come up from the bottom. I don't have to add an animation to say that it starts right here. Okay. All I do is I configure it, move, you know, in the general area where I might want it to end, click Add Animation, and then tell it what to do. Boom. Okay. Easy peasy. That's why I don't worry about where it starts too much, because you can get confused. Well, I don't, do I start here or? No, you just put stuff where you want it to begin the animation. And then you add the animation, and it will do it. OK, now watch what happens here. You notice that I, I clicked on the callout, and I changed like where it starts, its starting state because I haven't gotten to the animation yet, right? So watch what happens. It's going to animate to my end state. Okay. Oh, okay. We didn't like that. Let's do this. Let's bring it from down here up this way. And animate. Boom. Right? So now if I wanted to kind of change the end position, you have to double click 
the little blue bubble here, and then I could, I think, make a change. This is kind of squirrely, which is why I don't always do it. Yeah. So then you can make a change to your end state. So I guess that's a good way of looking at it. Uh, just click on the callout itself to change your beginning state to whatever you want. And if you want to change the end state of the animation, then you just double click the little blue arrow and make your change. And then the animation will reflect it. Is that easier? You know? Yep, double click the bubble to change the end state. Now, you got to be careful with that because, like I say, it gets a little squirrely. See what actually happened there was I, I, let me zoom in on the timeline. I actually added another animation. Right? Exactly what I didn't want to do. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of goofy the way it does that. Uh, let me see. If you right click here, edit animation just takes you to the properties here. So, there you go.